All right, I'm going to talk about the Great American Eclipse. It's an eclipse is happening August 21st. It's the first total solar eclipse whose path of totality stays completely within the U.S. since 1776. So we had one at the birth of the country, and now we have one now in the last year of our country. Okay, so... <laughs> Nice bookend that the universe is doing for us. Okay, so we're going to have the moon's shadow cast upon the earth. The sun is like where I am. There's the moon. And that little point is going to be totality where the sun gets completely blocked out. And the big ring of shadow out there called the penumbra is where the earth will only partially be blocked out. The part of dense shadow is called the umbra. That's where we get the word umbrella. Okay, so you can see the whole thing goes through the United States and no other countries. Okay, so this is our eclipse. All right. All right, here's an actual image, not just any of that simulation crap, of an eclipse taken by a Japanese satellite. Okay, boom, shadow of the moon falling on the earth. During this talk, to break up the science, I'm going to tell you about some great moments in eclipse history. Uh, June 30th, 1973 scientists decided to take the prototype of the Concorde, it was not yet a commercial aircraft, the very first one built, and fly along the eclipse path and extend it by a factor of 10. They flew it through for 74 minutes, okay? And they got a book out of it, Racing the Moon Shadow with the Concorde 001. A little ambitious in the naming of the Concorde numbers there. They only made 20, so I don't think they needed that leading zero there. <laughs> That is the actual aircraft that you can see in a museum in Paris, and they also got three nature papers out of it, which is the hardest thing of all of this, okay, if you're a scientist, let me tell you. This is the first pilot of the Concorde. I don't know about you, but I'd be a little scared to see the pilot wearing a helmet. Uh, <laughs> if I went flying on a plane, I'd be like, that's ah, okay, you go ahead. All right, for a solar eclipse, there's many different kinds. There's the partial eclipse, where the moon partially blocks out the sun. And that's probably what you've seen if you've only been to the U.S. in the last, you know, decade. I honestly, I wouldn't cross the street for a partial eclipse. It's nothing. I mean, it's, not, I mean, it's, it's okay. It's, it gets a little dimmer. Not worth your time. Okay. There's an annular eclipse where when the moon, because it's got an elliptical orbit, sometimes it's a little farther away, and it doesn't completely block out the sun, also not great. It, there's so much light in the sun, it doesn't do that much. Okay. Then there's the total eclipse, and that's what we're getting. Okay, that's where you totally block out the sun, and you start to see this crazy action around the sun that we can't normally see. All right, that stuff outside is called the corona, that white stuff, and that's what we're going to see on August 21st. Those little circles are representations of the sun. It's going to be a partial eclipse in Santa Barbara, sadly. You need to go up to Oregon or Idaho or all of these states along the path to really get the full effect, to see totality. And you can see, as we get totality in each place, in some places it's still only going to be partial, and each different place along the path here is going to see a little different piece of things as we go along. Okay, so this is what the track looks like, and up and down you can see how much of the sun is being blocked out, and then left to right you can see the totality is going to be two minutes when it enters at Oregon. Greatest eclipse is going to be two minutes, 40 seconds over here where this white thing is around the image of the sun there. And you really want to be in the 70 mile wide path that is totality. Okay, and you really want to be on the center line if you can. So a big fraction of people are going to try to go up to this one little line across the United States. So make your plans now. Okay, another great moment in eclipse history. The first eclipse that we know about that people have recorded is from 2134 BC in China. Two astrologers called Si and Ho, which were known as the drunk astrologers, <laughs> maybe you'll see why in a second, were put to death for failing to predict a solar eclipse. So many morals of this story. First of all, kids don't do astrology, okay? The wages of astrology is death, okay? Can you imagine how much better astrology would be if we put people to death for not getting the horoscope right? <laughs> You're like, I did not meet a mysterious stranger today. You're gonna die. <laughs> but this was the time period when astrologers and astronomers were the same thing, so I'm a little leery of endorsing this. But the other thing is, I don't know how they got the name of drunk astrologers. I don't think there's anything wrong with doing drunk astronomy, as we've seen here, but this was basically from their gravestone. 
what an ignominious death when 4,000 years later we're still talking about it at a bar, okay? That's kind of how I want to go out. All right, the other thing is when an eclipse occurred, the eclipse represented the emperor, okay? And so it got blocked out by the sun. Bad news for the emperor. He would normally eat vegetarian meals, avoid the main palace, perform rituals to rescue the sun, and sometimes issue an imperial edict to take the blame on himself. Okay, I don't see Donald Trump doing any of that. Um, <laughs> maybe avoiding the White House, but that's, that's it. Ooh, burn, right? All right, so anyway, trying to be not too partisan here. Okay, now that was how people did it 4,000 years ago. Wait, come on, those astrologers got a bad rap. All the rest of the people on the planet weren't predicting the eclipse, all right? So why should they be put to death? But now we can do much better. Okay, here's how well we can do. What we're talking about is uh, several visualizations of the path of the moon's shadow during the eclipse in 2017. Everything in it is driven by the data. So the color of the ground, the position of the path of totality, the lighting from the sun, the sun angle, all of those are things that are based on data. This visualization is unique because it shows the effect of both the elevation of the observer and the irregular edge of the moon, the limb of the moon we call it. Around the edge of the moon, we have these sort of jagged peaks and valleys. And a peak can block the sun a little bit earlier than we thought, and a valley can let the sun in a few seconds longer than we thought. The combined effect of these peaks and valleys is to create a shape that's not really an oval, it's more like a polygon but it hasn't actually been seen in, in exactly this way before, where we calculate those circumstances for every point on the map and draw that shape. Totality is that two and a half minutes when the moon completely covers the sun. The sudden darkness of totality is just something that a lot of people can't compare to anything else. I love the idea that I'm giving this kind of map to other people, and especially that it's more detailed and more accurate so that people are actually in the right place to see it. All right, that is what 4,000 years of putting people to death for getting the wrong answer will do, okay? Super accurate uh, eclipse predictions. Amazing that those little mountains on the moon can affect where and when you see different features. And so that's what this shows. You, you'll see this corona, this big crown around the sun. But some other things you will see are these things called Bailey's beads. And that's due to these little mountains and valleys. Some little light leaks through. And there's a thing called the diamond ring effect. The very last moment, there will be some deep valley on the moon. And you'll see the very last vestiges of the sun uh, peeking out there. And so uh, here's a time lapse of another eclipse where you can see the moon creeping up here. And just before it blocks out the sun, you get this diamond ring effect. Then you get uh, what we call totality, total eclipse. And the, you see the corona and you get the diamond ring effect again uh, a few minutes later. And then uh, you get another partial eclipse. So you want to put these on right when you see the diamond ring effect. They're um, like welder glasses type things. They block out the stuff. So actually you'll want to put those on during the time when it's leading up to it, and then you, you can take them off during uh, totality here. And then you want to put them back on. So the diamond rings are your signal to take off and put on your glasses, okay? So like during totality, it's only about as bright as the full moon. So you can do that without glasses. Otherwise, you want to put that glasses. So don't look directly at the sun, not now. Okay, not then, except for during totality. Uh, and I did hear a story about a school teacher that asked astronomers, like, after the eclipse is over, is it okay to look at the sun again? No, it is not okay. It wasn't the eclipse that made it bad to look at the sun. It's just don't look at the sun, okay? So don't look at the sun now. Don't look at it then, except when you see a little diamond ring through your glasses, then you can look and then put them back on. The beginning and end of totality, you might see this red stuff. That's the chromosphere, the red layer of the sun glowing about 36,000 degrees Fahrenheit. It's from hydrogen. If you have binoculars, which you can look, if it's during totality with binoculars, uh, you, can, you might see prominences, these big, huge flares on the sun. And then during totality, you'll see the corona, this region heated to more than a million degrees. Uh, and it stretches pretty far. It's hard to catch that on a photograph. Your eyes can actually see it better. This photograph, though, was stitched together with many, 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 many digital photographs. That part of the sun is much hotter than the surface. Million degrees out there, 
the uh, surface of the sun like 10,000 or something Fahrenheit. And it's not very well understood, and that's one reason scientists study it during eclipses. Another great moment in eclipse history, August 18th, 1868. This guy, Jules Janssen, he discovered helium while observing a spectrum of the sun. You look at the rainbow, and he, you can see the corona of the sun during the eclipse, and you take a spectrum, and then he noticed these lines, these emission lines in the spectrum. So the rainbow is not just a rainbow. You can see these other uh, signatures, these barcodes of elements, and it was the first element discovered not on the Earth, discovered somewhere else, okay? It's from the sun. It came from, the word helium comes from helios, the Greek word for the sun. Okay, so um, where do you want to go during an eclipse? You can go to this website, eclipse2017.nasa.gov. There's an interactive Google map to see the, the path across the United States. And you can put a pin down on wherever you want to be, and it will tell you when the eclipse starts and stops and the length of totality. The most important thing is you want to be on that center line that gives you the longest amount of time when the sun is completely blacked out. The farther away you go from it, the less time you have. So in certain parts of Kansas City, you might only get to see 49 seconds, for example, instead of two minutes. So try to get on that center line if you can. Also things to consider, good weather, right? You don't want to be there to be clouded out. So plan ahead for places that might have good weather historically. Here's a weather prediction for August 21st, just based on historical data. Uh, so not super accurate, but uh, this is average cloud cover on the left-hand side. So don't just go to Portland, okay? Bad idea. It's 65% cloudy or something. But if you go a little inland from there, once you get over the Cascades, the weather gets a lot better, okay? And then the same is true for a lot of mountain ranges in the U.S., and it gets worse over in the eastern part of the U.S., okay? But 35% uh, cloud cover, you still, still got a one in three chance of being clouded out, okay? So you got to plan uh, carefully, but also be on a place with good highways where you can get to the other parts of the eclipse path if you need to. Uh, highways that may be not quite as crowded, although they're going to be crowded on eclipse day. Be monitoring the weather. And then places where you can get a hotel room kind of nearby, or you might have to camp. There's going to be millions and millions of people, way more than anybody who ever goes to, you know, Paducah, Kentucky, or whatever, right? Uh, so <laughs> you're not going to just going to be like, hey, Motel 6, can I get a room? Ain't going to happen, okay? And then the length of totality is another consideration, okay, that you might care about. It doesn't matter that much. It's between 2 minutes and 2 minutes and 40 seconds. Uh, along the track, aside from the up and down part of the track. Another great moment in eclipse history, one of my favorites, okay, Einstein came up with the theory of general relativity in 1915, but not all the physicists believed it, right? It's super crazy, kind of out there. He was still only known in physics circles, not the person that we know today as Einstein, right? Another guy, Sir Arthur Eddington, another giant in the field of science, figured out that the eclipse was going to pass through the Heidi star cluster. So he measured the positions of the stars in early 1919, then sent eclipse expeditions to an island off the coast of Africa and another expedition to Brazil to measure the positions of these stars during the eclipse. And the idea was, if Einstein was right, the sun's gravity should bend the star's light, causing them to change position. And in fact, that's what they observed, and it confirmed the theory of relativity. When Eddington uh, put out his results, almost overnight, Einstein became famous. And this was a headlines from the New York Times, men of science more or less agog over results of eclipse observations, a book for 12 wise men. Ladies, you'll need to read this book, apparently, I don't know. Very few people understood relativity at the time. Today, we teach this to our students, okay? It's very commonly understood. And it was an amazing eclipse, boom, advances science. Okay, our last great moment in eclipse history. And this was an astronomer persuaded Alaska Airlines to let flight 870 leave 30 minutes early to cross a total solar eclipse. This is March 8th, 2016. Here's a picture from that flight. Here is another astronomer on that flight reaction to it. Now you know all the terminology to understand what he's talking about. Shadow coming in. Oh yeah, there it is. There's the shadow. Wow, look at that. All right, so look at the clouds of the comes. shadow creeping out Oh my out here. God, look at it. Here comes the shadow, look at that. It's like a tornado. Oh my God, here we go. 
The moon's shadow is coming. It is coming. Oh my God, Erica, look at this. I've never seen it like this, ever. Only in a plane. No flashes. Oh my God, here we go. Look at it. Oh my God. Whoa. Look at that. Oh my God. Here we go. Oh my God, it's coming right over. It's like a storm. Look at this. Oh my God, we're getting close. Get close. Who built the dome? I got Corona. There it is. Diamond Bounty's beads. Bounty beads, diamond ring. Look at that. Corona. Totality. Totality. Oh my God. Look at that. All right. That could be you on August 21st. Just to sum up that it can be a profound, life changing moment. A lot of times when people see this, they just devote their lives to following eclipses like people do the Grateful Dead uh, all around the earth. And it's a thing that has advanced science, changed politics, overthrown governments, and it will bring together people across uh, cultures and across time. So think about those people 4,000 years ago, they're experiencing the same emotion that you are. So don't miss it. Don't just stay here, go somewhere and go see this. Thanks.